Hi guys, uh, welcome to another webinar of ANA Prep. Uh, today we're going to talk about something which is a recurring topic in our content. But I think by the time you get to practice a lot of questions and taking uh, you know section tests, etc., you forget it. Yeah? But it is something that we must keep in mind at all times. It is something that we must keep in mind during our entire practice. And um, why? Because it pretty much forms the basics of what GMAT is all about. Look, and you know, we've been talking a lot about this in the past few uh, weeks. GMAT is a test of logic. Please do not forget that. Yeah? It doesn't matter how complicated the quant question in front of you seems to be. Remember that GMAT is a test of logic and reasoning. But then, for example, when you want to test logic and reasoning, um, you know, it, it's all about structure and form, et cetera, right? But the data has to be given and it has to be from some topic, isn't it? So then essentially GMAT, that data is given from math, that data is given from English, but that does not mean that GMAT is actually testing your math skills, that GMAT is actually testing how good you are how proficient you are in, let's say, the vocabulary or grammar of the of the language, right? They are testing how well reasoned you are. How well do you understand? And of course, since you know the language that we communicate is in English, you should be able to reason in English, right? And because you know most managers are going to be using data, they are going to be uh, you know doing some basic calculations. They they need to understand, let's say, how percentages move, etc., right? So that is the reason why it is based in math as well. But then when you look at any complicated math question, please remember remind yourself that this is a test of logic. Yeah, if you find yourself making four equations and then trying to solve for four unknowns, then you know that there is something that you are missing. Yeah. So what I've done for today is I have um, collected some, you know, a few data sufficiency questions where almost everyone makes equations, almost everyone, let's say, picks up three or four variables and then they try to solve it and you know give long solutions. Um, and we are going to see how to solve them logically. We'll uh, talk about the strategy that you should use to ensure that the logical method comes to mind, right? How to do that. So that is what we're going to discuss today. So those of you who are joining us for the first time, let me tell you quickly the way we run the webinars. I'm going to give you a question. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to try and solve the question. You can share your answer in the Q&A, which has been enabled for you. And then uh, we'll discuss the question together. Yeah, all right. Uh, a milk vendor mixes water with milk and sells the mixture at the same price per liter as if it were undiluted milk. So what, what do I do? Look, when, you know, when I read a question, every sentence I need to evaluate while I'm reading it. That does not mean that I'm going to start making my equations. That does not mean I'm going to start taking my variables. When I say I'm going to evaluate, it means I'm going to start visualizing what is happening, yeah, what is taking place. So this tells me that there is a milk vendor and he mixes water in milk. So then, you know, in, in the back of my mind, then I have that, okay, there is this one jar and perhaps he collects all the milk in that. And then he mixes some water in it and then he sells it in a, as if it were undiluted milk. So in a way, he's saying that, okay, you know, he's like kind of mixed the water. He's forgotten that this is mixed with water, whatever. He just thinks of it as undiluted milk. And now he sells it as if he was selling undiluted milk. Yeah. Okay. And that's all. Yeah, I read the sentence, I evaluate what it is saying, but then the, it is a mental picture. I'm not writing anything down. I'm not going to do anything right now. Okay, next sentence. The selling price per liter of the mixture is the vendor's cost per liter of the milk plus a markup of X percent. So then now I know that there is a markup of X percent. Okay, the water costs the vendor nothing. And this is what is expected, right? Uh, if the vendor gets a 50% profit on the sale of the mixture, what is the value of X? Okay, so now I have been given that the profit overall for the vendor is 50%. Yeah, I know that 50% is not the markup, right? Because he has put in water also. So essentially, this 50% consists of two things. One, that, that uh, water that he added to it. And the other thing is the X percent of the markup that he took. Right now, how much was water? How much is X percent? I have absolutely no idea at this point. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Let me go on to my statement one. 
it says if the vendor mixes half the intended quantity of water and you know at this point i'm feeling okay the question is getting even more complicated now here he's mixing some quantity whatever and here he's talking about mixing half the intended quantity well but doesn't matter still i know it is going to be a question of logic it's going to be a question of reasoning so it's okay doesn't matter it's not going to typically your gmat questions will not take more than 2 minutes there will be a method in which you can solve it in 2 minutes if it is an 805 plus level question which by the way a few questions of gmat are then even if you get them wrong realize that the penalty is going to be absolutely negligible so it doesn't really matter yeah even if and you know if you have reached the level where you're taking an 805 question where you're getting one that means that you are super smart and you've been able to do the easy and medium questions really really fast so you're going to have extra time yeah okay um we're getting distracted but let's come back if the vendor mixes half the intended quantity of water and sells every liter of the mixture at the cost price per liter of the undiluted milk the vendor will get a 10 percent profit so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take some numbers to help me understand exactly what is going on yeah it, it seems to have gotten a little complicated so i tell myself all right so if you know, whatever he mixes, fine. But if he sells every liter of the mixture at the cost price per liter of the undiluted milk. So let me say that there are, for example, if 100 units of undiluted milk, yeah. And let's say the cost price of these 100 units is dollar 100. So let's say if the cost price is dollar one per unit per unit of milk. Yeah, this is his cost price. Now, if he mixes half the intended quantity and sells every liter at this cost, at dollar one per unit, he's selling every liter, then he's getting a profit of 10%. Of course, my profit is going to include the undiluted milk and the markup as well. So I'm getting a dollar 110 over here. In case I'm selling that entire mix, but I'm selling this mix supposedly at the cost price, which is dollar one per unit. Look, how is this going to happen? This will happen. I'm selling at the price of dollar one per unit. I'm getting dollar one ten. What does this mean? It means that I had 110 units to sell. Otherwise, it's not possible. Is that clear? If I'm getting a 10% profit, it I bought it for dollar hundred or whatever, you know, however I obtained it was for cost was dollar hundred, and I'm making a 10% profit, it means I'm getting a dollar hundred and ten. But I had sold it at my cost price, which was dollar one per unit. That only means that I sold 110 units, right? But my cost for it was dollar hundred only, which means the milk was 100 units. And the extra added water was then 10 units. Now, now the picture is clear to me. Yeah, I had 100 units of undiluted milk, which I bought for $1.100. I added 10 liters of water in it, the cost of which was nothing. I sold this thing. And then, you know, I had 110 units and I thought about it as selling as if I'm selling undiluted milk, right? And I sold it at my cost price of $1 per unit. So I got $110. It all makes sense now. What am I given? That this was half the intended quantity of water. So when I put 10 units in 100 units, that was half the quantity that I wanted to put of water, that I usually put of water, which means that in 100 units, the, uh, the vendor, he puts 20 units of water twice of this because this is half of what he intended to put every 100 units of milk. So this means that when he has... 100 units of milk, he puts 20 units of water in that, this becomes 120 units. Then he takes a markup of X percent on it and he sells it for $1.150 right what is the markup that he's taking he thinks of this as undiluted milk so he's taking it as cost price of 120 the markup that he's taking is 30 on this which means that 30 upon 120 will give me a 25 percent markup right so this statement alone is sufficient to tell me what is the value of x here x is going to be 25 yeah 25 percent yeah so this statement is sufficient
Mm -hmm. All right. Let's look at the second statement. It says the concentration of milk in the mixture after adding. Now forget about all this. Yeah, don't think about this now. 100, 110, etc. 110, that was a hypothetical situation where he said if he had added half the water. Now I don't have to think of that. Now I'm looking back at this data only where 50% uh, is the profit that he gets by doing two things, adding water and by taking a markup of X percent, assuming that this is undiluted milk. Yeah. So then the concentration of milk in the mixture after adding water is five by six. So if I had 100 units of milk, yeah. So then how much water is added? Now, you know, go back to your ratios. I've talked about this plenty and plenty that your questions will be much faster if you understand ratios really well, right? How, look over here, they are giving me that the, this ratio is five is to six. Concentration of milk in the mixture after adding water, that means milk is five and the total mixture is six, yeah? Or I can say the milk is five and the water is one part, doesn't matter. In any case, what do I get? If actually I'm thinking of 100 units of milk, this becomes 120 units. This means I've added 20 units of water in 100 units of milk. Again, if I've added 20 units, I'm again back at this step of my previous question. I know this was sufficient. I'll just mark this as sufficient and move on. Right? In any case, one if you know I've got 120, that means it's a markup of 30. 30 upon 120 gives me a markup of 25%. So I know that this is sufficient. Right? So then both of these are sufficient alone. Yeah, look, um, you know, people end up making equations in this question usually. Um, you real and the, the calculation becomes really, really long. The question is supposed to be a really hard question. But then all you have to do is you have to approach it logically. One, you have to believe this. You have to trust this, that GMAT is a test of logic, guys. It is a test of logic. Yeah, it is GMAT is no, I mean, there, you know, there is no value in case all you know is how to make linear equations and how to solve those. There isn't any skill you're learning in that. Yeah, what is the skill that you're adding to yourself? You are learning how to think uh, logically. You're, you're learning how to reason things out. Those are going to be extremely useful and they're going to be extremely useful no matter what kind of career you choose in the future. Yeah. And that is what an MBA has to prepare you for. Yeah. Keep that in mind. Always, if you think that the question seems to be really complicated, oh man, I'll have to make four equations. No. Keep in mind that you're missing something. Try to reason out the whole question. You know, it, it a holistic approach. Look at the entire big picture and then solve it. Yeah. Any doubts in this solution? Do you understand this? <laughs> 